Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the U.S. Army Medical Center of Excellence, or MedCOE, Centennial Book Launch and Presentation. The host for today's ceremony is Major General Dennis P. Lamaster, Commanding General, MedCOE. At this time, we would like to welcome our honored guests. Mr. Joe Bray, the civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, or CASA, and distinguished quartermaster. Major General Retired Daniel Dyer and Mrs. Cynthia Dyer. Brigadier General Retired Richard Urson. Mr. J.M. Harmon III, Deputy of the Commanding General, Med COE. Command Sergeant Major Clark Charpentier, Med COE Command Sergeant Major. The Honorable Diana Denman, Distinguished Quartermaster. Ms. Jeannie Travis, Distinguished Quartermaster. Brigadier General Clinton Murray, Commanding General, Brook Army Medical Center. Colonel Retired John Fristo, President, Fiesta Commission. Mr. John Meyer, Fiesta Commission. Mrs. Irma Duran de Rodriguez, Fiesta Commission. You have been listening to the, Ar to the After Five Jazz Combo from Fort Sam's own 323rd Army Band, led by Sergeant Luis Echeverria Colon. Please join me in an enthusiastic round of applause for Fort Sam's own. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem sung by Colonel Princess Aturase and remain standing for the invocation delivered by the Med, Coast, Med COE Command Chaplain, Lieutenant Colonel Valeria Van Dress. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets Red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that a flag was still there. Oh, see, does that? star-spangled banner yet wave the land of the free and the home of the brave If you wish, please pray with me. Our gracious God, we come to you today in the midst of a busy season to stop and say thank you for your guiding hand, for raising up inspirational leaders to maintain this organization for the past 100 years. We are so grateful for Ms. Adrian Neidinger and Mr. Andy Watson and their expertise to tell the Medical Center of Excellence's story through pictures and narrative so that we can take pride in the Army's premier institution for military medical training. From its humble beginnings as a medical field service school to now being part of the Training and Doctrine Command, we are so blessed to be a part of the MedCOE for such a time as this. A bellwether in navigating a global pandemic, all while continuing to train America's sons and daughters to save lives on the battlefield, we treasure this moment and celebrate our accomplishment and history together. 
May you bless every member of Army Medicine, whether at home or abroad, as they continue to conserve fighting strength and win on every battlefield, both visible and invisible. Bless now the rest of this ceremony and those who have contributed time and effort to make this such a memorable event. Amen. Please be seated. We all know that U.S. Army Medical Center of Excellence trains the world's premier military medical force, Army Medicine. But we are here today to celebrate our centennial through our origin story. Please enjoy this lesson in Hill's history illustrated by our living display of historical uniforms. Lessons learned during the First World War led the Army to create schools for the technical services, including the Army Medical Department, the Medical Field Service School, where the Med COE traces its origin, received official approval by the Department of the Army on May 15, 1920, after a formal request for its establishment was made by the Surgeon General of the Army at the time, Major General Merritt Ireland. The school began its first class in July 1921 at Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania. The Field School was established when the entire Army was reevaluating its approach to training, education, and the professionalization of all of the Army's branches. From the start, Army Medicine was unique. It continued to operate the Army Medical School, providing postgraduate training in military and preventive medicine while it was opening the Medical Field Service School, illustrating the dual requirements for the medical officer to be skilled both as physician and as a leader. During World War II, the Medical Field Service School expanded its training capacity as the Army grew to over 8 million soldiers. But the facilities at Carlisle would prove to be too small. In February of 1946, the school moved to Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Following the Vietnam War, an Army reorganization created U.S. Army Health Services Command, located at Fort Sam Houston, Texas. The new headquarters took command of nearly all medical department activities, and the Medical Field Service School reorganized and redesignated as the Academy of Health Sciences in December of 1972 and was reassigned from Brook Army Medical Center to Health Services Command in April 1973. Eighteen years later, as troops were redeploying from Operation Desert Storm, the Academy of Health Sciences was redesignated the Army Medical Department Center and School in July of 1991. When the U.S. Army Medical Command was established in October of 1994, the AMED Center and School was reassigned to MedCom. In October 2019, the AMED Center and School was transferred from MedCom to the U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command, or TRADOC, as part of the reorganization of Army Medicine. As part of that transfer, the organization was once again reorganized and redesignated as the U.S. Army Medical Center of Excellence. Please give these outstanding soldiers a round of applause. Though COVID-19, another historic event, put a pause on much of the formal centennial events we had planned last year, we are happy to gather here today to celebrate the launch of the MedCOE centennial book, Army Medicine Starts Here, the U.S. Army Medical Center of Excellence and its Origins, a pictorial history of the first 100 years from 1920 through 2020. At this time, we ask you to welcome co-author and director of the AMED Center for History and Heritage, Mr. Andy Watson. Good morning and thank you for being here. Uh, yes, I am a historian. No, I'm not gonna give you four hours of historic lecture with quizzes or anything like that. Uh, disappointed, right? Okay. So uh, my remarks will be fairly brief, but I, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't add just a little bit of history, right? So first off, it's appropriate we have this ceremony at the AMED Museum. Similar to the book, similar to the origins of the Medical Center of Excellence, the story starts at Carlisle Barracks. So the AMED Museum began in 1944 uh, at the Medical Field Service School, and uh, it started out as a uh, equipment shop where they retained items so that uh, they could use them for later or later study. And from that, 
they created the museum we have today. So those are the origins. Well, I don't want to go on a tangent. Back to the book, you know, I get kind of carried away with part of this. So uh, the book that we have is a pretty good pictorial record of the first hundred years of the Medical Center of Excellence and its uh, original, you, know, you have the brochure, all the different names that the school has gone through. Uh, I, I will say that there was a, a predecessor book. This book starts with another book, and it begins with Envision Design Train. And uh, it, it covers the first 90 years. We added to that. We changed a couple things around. And uh, starting with that book, and, and you heard a little bit of the history already. So where does this all come from? How did this start? Now, it, we mentioned World War I, but there's more to that. So. Uh, about a year and a half after World War I ends, Surgeon General says, we need to find a better way to train our medical professionals. They, uh, they have the medical knowledge, but we need to hone that. So uh, they came up with the concept of the Medical Field Service School, not quite the name just yet, and uh, they, had the, uh, they had the material. During World War I, uh, there was a great spirit of volunteerism and in some cases, whole university hospitals volunteered to serve in the Army. And they had the medical expertise of the time, but they weren't quite assimilated into the Army, and they needed to work on their field craft. And uh, so when they get to the Medical Field Service School, they learn uh, a little bit more of uh, being in the field and working out of tents. And uh, back in those days, using a lot more horses when uh, Model Ts don't work. So that's, that's part of the origin story. Uh, moving forward, and you heard a little bit about it, Carlisle Barracks gets to be basically too small. There are satellite uh, posts and other pieces during World War II, talking an army that's over 8 million soldiers, but it's just not big enough to train medical personnel anymore. So at the close of World War II in 1946, the Medical Field Service School moves to Fort Sam Houston. Camp Bullis serves as the tactical training area, uh, Brook Army Hospital, Old BAMC, later to become BAMC, is a uh, great setting for clinical training, and there's plenty of room for classroom training as well. So uh, those are the big first pieces of the book. I don't want to give too much away because then you'll be like, well, I don't want to read the book because he told us it all in the lecture. So th there's a whole lot more. There's a whole lot more. And you know, from helicopters moving in in the 1950s to being part of the training regiment to uh, all kinds of changes in technology, changes in unit structure, organizational structure, uh, health science uh, center, or command, I should say, medical command, uh, decent, more recent history, the assimilation into uh, uh, TRADOC and, and other pieces, Army Futures Command, it's all in the book. And, and I may not be the best salesman, but if you haven't heard it already, I'm saying get the book. So there is that. Uh, like I mentioned, my remarks are pretty short, but I do have some thank yous. So in closing, I'd like to mention that I am a co-author, which is true. Uh, historian Adrian Neidinger and her team built the foundation for this book, and then I followed on with an equally impressive team. And I could not have completed this book without help from a number of hardworking people, uh, Borden Institute, DCOM, as well as them setting up this uh, ceremony, and uh, many others, some of whom are mentioned in the acknowledgments uh, so I know you're going to have to check the acknowledgments. Again, you've got to get that book. But uh, as an Army historian, I will also always be a co-author, as it's the soldiers of the Army who create the story. Uh, thank you, and don't forget a copy of that book, right? Ladies and gentlemen, the MedCOE Commanding General Major General Dennis P. Lamaster. All right. Okay, so uh, I'll be on Amazon here and ordering my book. I got the hint, Mr. Watson. Uh, thank you so much for those remarks, and I want to thank everyone involved with uh, crafting and codifying and remembering our first hundred year story. Uh, which, as pointed out, we should have discussed last year, but we had something that got in the way of that. Uh, but we're here today, and that's what matters, and today is an absolutely beautiful day. 
Uh, this is a tremendous milestone, and I am extremely humbled to be here with all of you and to be the commanding general of the Medical Center of Excellence. The brief moment in time of our history, 100 years past, the future is wide open. How long it'll go on, you know, for infinity. Uh, but we couldn't do it last year due to the pandemic, um, and we're doing it now. And I will tell you that our, our future looks exceptionally bright here. Our organization was created to conserve fighting strength. Tish pointed out, you know, I always said to conserve the fighting strength, but Tish pointed out, no, it's conserve fighting strength. And for, holy smokes, that's what it is. It's really just conserve fighting strength. Um, and that's on, that's on the flag. Uh, while some basics remain the same in war and conflict, the threat evolves decade by decade, year by year, and sometimes even day to day. Uh, and this is why we must continue to transform and evolve to meet advancing challenges which we will face. History is now. It's happening now. Yesterday is yesterday, and today will be a new chapter in our history, this time tomorrow. The things which you do here today at the Medical Center of Excellence may one day be written about as an incredible advancement in Army medicine. <clears throat> here, we train the Army's medical professionals. We are charged by the Combined Arms Center and the Training and Doctrine Command to be the proponent for Army medicine. We develop leaders and we drive change in Army medicine to prepare the Army to compete and win no matter the enemy. While our motto is what is adorned on our unit colors, like I just mentioned, to confer, conserve fighting strength, we truly believe that Army medicine starts here. The breadth and depth of our reach is staggering. This is the entry point for all members of the Army's medical department. Every doctor, nurse, surgical technician you see in a hospital, every combat medic you encounter downrange, every medical researcher working to advance Army medicine, every single medical professional in the modern Army has passed through these doors, walked through these grounds, taken a PT test in that field right over there, perhaps lived in that building right there as I did years ago called Fort Sam Houston home for a, a moment in time of their life. While we are a complex and diverse organization, the Medical Center of Excellence is the one place all Army medical personnel have been, but it is, as Mr. Harmon says, probably the least understood. So I'm gonna run some numbers by, just kind of give scale, depth, and breadth of all that goes on here. And this is just a snippet. While we have over 1,500 faculty and staff who educate and train over 32,000 students annually in 257 courses or programs, today the average daily student load of 4,600 soldiers includes not only the 3,300 soldiers here at JBSA, but another 1,300 students at 246 clinical sites across the Department of Defense. Our programs range from certificates and diplomas to advanced graduate degrees in a multitude, multitude of medical disciplines. In fact, the Medical Center of Excellence currently offers four masters and nine doctoral degree programs. Throughout much of the last 20 years, four of these programs have consistently ranked among the top 10 by the US News and World Reports for America's best graduate schools. Over the last year and a half, while dealing with the added pressure of the largest pandemic the world has seen in over 100 years, we boldly and safely kept the Army's pipeline of trained and ready medical professionals securely open. Medical Center of Excellence faculty, staff, and commanders accomplished an amazing feat by continuing to train over 35,000 soldiers and safely transporting nearly 20,000 soldiers into and out of Fort Sam Houston during these challenging times. We did not ship a single soldier to first unit of assignment sick with COVID, not a single soldier. Their efforts, your efforts, ensured our nation continued to receive newly trained medical personnel, even while many of our faculty and staff members stepped up to support national efforts to combat COVID in support of Operation Warp Speed and other related missions. What the Medical Center of Excellence has accomplished will resonate now and well into the future to ensure we have a trained, educated, and resourced medical force. That is our legacy. This is a history which we are making. <clears throat> So America's sons and daughters will continue to count on us. Our mission in future history begins and ends with soldiers. Everything else is secondary. So what does the future hold? Our vision 
is the foundation upon which Army medicine is built, sustained, and transformed. We will continue to be the force modernization proponent leader for Army medicine. We will continue to assist the Surgeon General in safeguarding Army medicine and the Army Health System's reputation of providing world-class expeditionary and a globally integrated medical force. And we will continue to be an integral part of the Combined Arms Center and Training and Doctrine Command's adaptive character and culture that ensures our Army remains the nation's force of decisive action. As we celebrate the past today with our centennial book, I think we will all agree that these are historic times. Even without the pandemic, our history is now. No one truly fathoms that they are part of history while they are making it. For those of you who are new to the Medical Center of Excellence, though your book has yet to be written, be proud of the knowledge that we, which includes all of you, are setting Army medicine on an upward trajectory that is sure to last well into the next 100 years. Army medicine starts here. As General LeMaster is joined by Mr. Harmon, Command Sergeant Major Charpentier, and Mr. Watson, we ask our civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army to come forward. Mr. Joe Bray is being presented an embossed copy of the MedCOE Centennial Book for the support and dedication he has shown to our soldiers and mission over the years. They represent all of our distinguished guests who are able to join us today and those who have supported the MedCOE and our mission for the last 100 years. As Mr. Bray is seated, we now ask our youngest soldier and our employee with the most years of service to come forward. The Med COE Command Group and Mr. Watson will now present embossed copies of the Centennial Books to our most junior soldier, Private Bright Odura, a 17-year-old who is currently in training to become a 68 Whiskey Combat Medic, and our civilian employee with the most years of service, Mr. James Murray, who has over 50 years of federal service. Ladies and gentlemen, Private Caitlin Thompson will now bring the cake forward for the ceremonial cutting. Oh, one picture. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Murray, Mr. Watson, and Private Thompson. Please stand and join us for the singing and playing of the Army song.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please ensure you get your very own copy of Army Medicine Starts Here. There is a reception located to my right and your left for all invited guests. Thank you for attending. Army Medicine Starts Here. <laughs>